In this video, Timmy's going to show you how to set up and use Phone Hub on a Chromebook. If you have an Android phone and a Chromebook, you can connect your phone to your Chromebook with Phone Hub. And then you'll be able to access a lot of extra features from your phone directly on your Chromebook. And once it's set up, you won't actually have to touch your phone. You can just do things on your phone through your Chromebook. And in this video, Timmy's going to show you how you can set it all up and then walk you through how you can use it and show you all the cool things you can do with it. To get started, you will obviously need to have your Android phone and your Chromebook and you need to make sure Bluetooth is turned on on both of them. So on the Chromebook, we will click on the time in the bottom right hand corner down here. And then we'll make sure Bluetooth is on up here. So it says on there. And if we click on it here, this switch is turned on and it says on. You don't have to connect it to any devices, but it's okay if it is. Just make sure Bluetooth is on, on there. And then we will do a similar thing with the Android phone. If we unlock it and then we'll pull down from the top and Bluetooth is off here, so we'll just turn that on and make sure Bluetooth is on there. And now you're ready to go ahead and start setting it up. So first off on the Chromebook, you'll need to pull up the settings app. So we'll click on the time in the bottom right corner, then click the settings icon here. And then in this side menu here, you'll click connected devices. And now up the top here, you should see Android phone, connect your Chromebook with your phone. And assuming you haven't set it up already, there'll be a setup button here. So we'll go ahead and click set up here. And now it'll pull up this page showing you some of the cool things you can do with phone hub. But up here, you'll need to select what device you want to use. If we click this drop down menu here, it will show you a list of all the Android devices that are compatible with Phone Hub that you have signed into with your Google account. So you have to have the same Google account on your Chromebook and on your phone, but as long as you do, your phone will appear here. But sometimes you might also see an old phone or a phone you don't really use anymore and things like that. So if there's multiple phones here, you just need to make sure you select the correct phone that you actually want to use with Phone Hub. Timmy's going to go with the Pixel 4 XL. This is actually quite an old phone of Timmy's, but Timmy's never set up Phone Hub on this phone before, so Timmy's using it to demonstrate so that everything will be completely new. But you would select the phone you actually use. And then you'll go ahead and click the Connect button down here. And now you need to enter your Google account password. So this is just the password for your Google account. It tells you the account here. So you need the password for this account. So hopefully you know that or you have it saved somewhere and you can go ahead and type that in and click done. And now it says all set. So you can click done here. And now you'll see a notification on your Chromebook and you'll also see a notification on your phone. So everything is being connected. And now you'll have this little phone icon on the bottom bar down here. And this is how you'll access Phone Hub whenever you want to open it. So if we click here, we can see, we can see a few things of the phone and we have access to a few functions, but it's actually not quite set up yet. The setup process would make more sense if it just walked you through everything you needed to set up straight away, but it actually doesn't. It lets you set up a few little chunks at a time. So we can see here, we have this message that says, view your phone's recent photos, media, and notifications. And that's all really quite useful. So you'll probably want to set that up as well. So we'll go ahead and click set up here and it'll open up the settings and tell you a bit more about it, but you'll just need to click next here and you'll need to give it permission on your phone. So you'll need to make sure your phone is unlocked and turned on. And then this something looking a bit like this at least should pop up on your phone. 
and you'll tap allow there. So you're just giving your Chromebook permission to access all the stuff on your phone. But now that you've tapped allow on that pop-up on your phone, as it says here, you can now view your phone's recent photos, media, and notifications. So now if we click done here, and we click on the phone icon again to pull up Phone Hub once again. We now see recent media. So we see a whole lot of pictures that Timmy's recently taken on Timmy's phone. And sometimes if you've been using Google Chrome and you've opened websites there, it'll also have another section for websites you've been visiting in Google Chrome and you can click on them to open that up. And now you'll also get notifications from your phone on your Chromebook and things like that as well. And on most phones now, you'll be done. That's all there is to do. But on some phones, there is also an additional feature you can access where you can stream apps from your phone onto your Chromebook. To me, I'll show you how that works later on. But when you click on the phone hub option here, if your phone has that feature available, there'll be this message here saying view your phone's apps. And you can go ahead and click set up there. And next. And now normally when you do this, a message will pop up on your phone asking for permission to access your apps. And you just have to allow that. It looks just like the one we saw before, but because to me has already set this up on this phone, it actually didn't bring up the message this time, so we can't see it, but it was just like the message before and you just have to tap allow. And now we can click done here. And now we have absolutely all the phone hub features set up and ready to go. So we can close the settings app. We don't really need that open anymore. And now phone hub is completely set up. So you've enabled all the features where you can connect your phone to your Chromebook. So now that it's all set up, Tamil will walk you through some of the cool things you can do with phone hub. So most of the functions in phone hub will be accessed from the phone hub menu. So to do that, you'll see this little phone icon down the bottom of the screen here, and you can click that. And this will pull up the phone hub menu. And at the top of the screen here, we see the name of the phone, which isn't very helpful, but we also see how much cell service it has, how good reception it has. And we also see the phone's battery life there. So we see how much battery the phone has, which can be handy. And now down here, we have these three buttons and you can click on these buttons on your Chromebook to turn stuff on and off on your phone. So the first one is actually really cool. Tommy has an entire separate video, which me shows you how you can set up a hotspot on your phone to connect to your Chromebook. So then if you're somewhere where there's no Wi-Fi, but your phone has phone service, you can turn on a hotspot on your phone and use the internet from your phone on your Chromebook, which can be really handy, but if you have an Android phone and you have phone hub set up, all you actually need to do is come in here and click this one button and it takes about 30 seconds for it to connect. But what it will do is turn on the hotspot on your phone automatically and then automatically connect your Chromebook to it. So now in the time it took to me to explain that it now says connected and now the Chromebook can access internet directly from the phone. So this can be very handy if you're somewhere without Wi-Fi, but you have your Chromebook and your phone. And then once you're done with it, you'll just click that same button again and it'll turn it all off. Next up, we have silence, which is fairly self-explanatory. If you click this button, it'll put your phone on do not disturb, as we can see there and you click it again and it'll take it off do not disturb. So that can be handy at times. And then there's also this locate button here. So if you can't find your phone and but it is nearby and you have your Chromebook, you can click the locate button here and 
Then it will make your phone ring very loudly, even if it's on Do Not Disturb. And then to stop it, you can either click that button or you can turn your phone on and open it back up again. And then it will stop because it knows you've found the phone. So that can be really handy as well. Next up, assuming you enabled the media, which Tamir would recommend doing, we have recent photos. So the four most recently taken photos on your phone or most recently edited or downloaded or anything, the four most recent photos on your phone will appear right here. So if you want one of those, if you want to open it up and download it and see it on your Chromebook, you can just click on one of these photos and it will download it from your phone into the downloads folder. So now if we open up the files app and click on downloads here, this photo that was on Timmy's phone is now on Timmy's Chromebook. So we can do that quite easily and that can be very handy at times. So there's that. And sometimes if you've been recently looking at websites in the Google Chrome app on your phone, it will show you a list of those recent websites here. It'll look a bit like that. And then you can just click on one of those websites and it will open it up on your Chromebook, which can be quite handy. Unfortunately, it's not showing any right now, but it does it sometimes and it's pretty helpful. And now this won't show for everyone, but if you have a compatible phone and you've enabled the feature, you might also see recent apps here. And with recent apps, these are the most recently opened apps that you've most recently opened on your phone. And you can actually open it on your Chromebook from your phone. It's a bit weird, but if we click on Google Fit, for example, it takes a second to connect. But now we have the Google Fit app open here and we can scroll around and we can click to another page and things like that. And we can use the app on the phone. It is a bit glitchy and weird because the app isn't on the Chromebook. The app is only on the phone. So it's kind of live streaming it from the phone to the Chromebook and it's a bit strange. And most apps that you have on your phone you could also just install on your Chromebook these days from the Google Play Store. So there's probably not a lot of use for it, but it might be useful for things that you can only get on your phone or something. So some people might find very specific use cases for it. And if you ever think of something where it might be helpful, it's there if you need it. But to me, wouldn't be too worried about that. It's not really the most helpful feature in the world. But that's all the features that you can see in this main phone hub menu. But once you enable phone hub, there are also a few extra features that you don't really see. One of those features is Wi-Fi sync. So you won't really ever see this anywhere, but it will be happening. When you connect your phone to a new Wi-Fi network, it will save the name and password of that network to the phone so that it can automatically connect to it in the future. And with Wi-Fi sync, all of those saved network names and passwords will be synced across to your Chromebook. So if you've connected your phone to a certain Wi-Fi network in the past, now if you take your Chromebook to that place and you turn your Chromebook on, your Chromebook will automatically connect to it even though it's never been connected to that Wi-Fi network in the past. And you never even have to type the Wi-Fi password on your Chromebook. So that can be quite a helpful feature that you won't ever really see in any of these menus or anything. You won't notice it's there until it actually does it. But another phone hub feature that you don't really see in the phone hub menu is syncing your notifications. So now that you've set up phone hub, when you receive a notification on your phone, could be a text message, an email, or any notification from any other app, that notification will also appear in the notifications on your Chromebook. So then once it appears there, you can dismiss it so you can swipe it away on your phone and it will disappear on your Chromebook. 
or you can dismiss it on your Chromebook and it will disappear on your phone. It's all completely synced. And this can really be quite handy if you're working on your Chromebook and you don't want to have to stop and pick up your phone to see your notifications. And the final additional feature that you get with Phone Hub is Smart Lock. Now, when you turn your Chromebook on and off, when you turn your Chromebook off and then back on, or if you sign out, or if you click the lock button here, normally you would type the password and log in, but as long as your phone is within range and unlocked, so you might unlock it with your fingerprint or your face, now it will just say unlocked by your phone. And then you can just click this arrow button and you're in without having to actually type your password. So you might not always do this, but if you happen to have your phone right here and it's easy enough to unlock your phone, it can be slightly easier than having to type the password in on your Chromebook. And that's the end. We've made it through all the features that Phone Hub gives you. So hopefully now you've got your phone set up and working with your Chromebook with Phone Hub and you have a good idea of what you can do with it and how you can use it. And hopefully you might find some of the features fairly useful. You do need to make sure you keep Bluetooth and Wi-Fi turned on on your Chromebook and your phone for this to work. So both devices will have to have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi turned on for at least some of the features. And unfortunately, some of the functions can sometimes be a little bit glitchy. So if you have any problems, you might just need to click back and then try doing it again, perhaps restart your Chromebook and your phone. But overall, it usually works pretty well and it can be quite useful. But that's all there is to this video. So hopefully you found it helpful and Tamil will see you in another one soon.